Hi, y'all. It's Bridget Cudshaw with Real Things Living. Today, my guest is Leslie Seymour. She's the founder of Cubby Club, and she created this to hold a space for women who are 40 plus. She also, my understanding, is an author of two books. She also has a strong background in, in editing and was the editor-in-chief of multiple magazines. I won't go down that list because it's you have a really fantastic background. Can you say hi, Leslie? Huh? How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. And I'm so glad we connected. And I like what you're standing for. Is that the right word? Um, helping other women, really, because it doesn't matter what age you're at. We all seem to be confused. <laughs> But uh, I I like what you're doing. And I, the first thing that popped into my mind when I got all this information about you is what prompted you to start this Covey Club? Well, Covey is a small group of birds. And I started it because when I was, I ran various women's magazines from YM to Mary Claire to Red Book, and then a magazine called More, um, which was for women 40 plus. And when they closed more in 2016, I had to decide what I was going to do next. And the question was, was I going to like leave the publishing business? I had gotten my sustainability degree at the Columbia, my master's. I thought I would segue into the beauty business. They certainly need help in the area of sustainability. I didn't want to continue in the publishing business. I'd run four different women's magazines. It was great fun. But it was clear that the industry was in decline and it was it got to be really depressing. I mean, if anybody's been in a declining industry, um, you know, instead of calling people in and celebrating your big wins, you're calling people in and cutting jobs. I mean, that's all you do. And it's it's a very depressing, negative kind of thing. So I decided that I would probably segue into beauty. And what happened is when the magazine closed, the readers was one point five million readers were angry. They were very mad. And so they came to my social media and said, do something else for us. And I was like, like what? <laughs> I've never been an entrepreneur. I don't know what to do. And what was so interesting is I, so I am a good researcher. So I gave them a survey, which had anybody out there who's a researcher knows this is ridiculous. I gave, but I don't know what I'm doing. So I just gave it to them. 54 questions. Wow. They, 627 of them filled it out to the end. Yes, this is how serious they were. And I took what their answers were and I mapped out literally Covey Club from that. And originally I thought it was going to be an online publication because that's what I know, right? I, that's what I do. I did that for a couple of months, quickly realized I couldn't make it into any kind of business. There was no revenue. People wouldn't pay for an online magazine. So I had to lean into the club part of it. I always knew there would be something other than the content. I'm a real content person. And I had to start making up what would that club be. And really what I realized is that magazines are what I call a flat community, meaning that when you would put your magazine on your coffee table, that identified you as part of a club. You were a part of the Vogue Club. You're part of, I remember the Glamour Cosmo you know, like rivalry, right? Like, were you Cosmo or were you Glamour? And they were very different people. So I was like, okay, well, now we have the technology to make that club live. Why can't we do everything we do in women's magazines but make it live like this? Oh. And so I just took the ideas of, you know, yes, we did interviews. Yes, we did, um, you know, articles. Why can't we make it all live? Why can't we bring people in to teach instead of having to you know, write the teachings down, which is my natural thing to do is to do a Q&A with somebody and write all their stuff down. What if we do it at live? So we started out teaching, bringing in experts and doing workshops, and it just kind of went from there. And now we have things called pods, which are where a couple of times a year you gather with different women, like about five to seven, and you work on whatever that project is for 12 weeks, and it could be elder care, personal reinvention, career reinvention, podcasting, writing, whatever it is, you get to know these women and you work really well. Some of these pods are are so successful that they've been going for years and I have to like, well, we have a new, a new round and I have to, I'm the owner of the thing and I have to go to the people who are in it. And I'm like, you know, I have just one person for writing. Would you mind? Him? Could you take that person in? Cause I can't start a separate pod. Cause I don't have enough people. Would you mind? They're like, <laughs> Let me check with the people, you know, and it's like, it's really very funny. Um, and now we do speed networking. We do 
live events now that COVID's behind us. We're doing, I have a live event coming up September 20th in New York City. And it's a full day and it's all about health and wellness and connection. And um, we do all that kind of stuff. So it's all getting together. There's a lot of content and it's a lot of fun. And we crash women into each other. And what's wonderful about women our age is that we are all accomplished and we all, you know, we're like, I often think of the world as, you know, like we all had our specialties, like part of your hand. And when you put people together, like all those things, amazing things happen. You know, marketing, I know podcasting, somebody else knows this. And when you are, you know, you're accomplished, this is not 20 year olds coming together and saying, hey, let's put on a show. How do we do this? Right. It, I know how to do this for you and I can teach you. I can teach you in a half an hour, right? And in fact, what we did is we've been teaching for so long now, it's seven years, that we took all of our courses and we put them into a an area of the club, which is called the Academy. So awesome. it's about 400 courses. Wow. When you join the club, you have access to all that. So whatever you're interested in, you know, it could be leadership skills, um, it could be dealing with menopause issues. It could be whatever the thing is you want to get started on, how to build your personal brand, how to, you know, how to start an entrepreneurial business over the age of 40. You can just jump in, start going, meet all those women. They still want to get to know you. All their contact information is there. It's a, it's a really wonderful experience that, you know, I never knew if it would work. But I threw it out there and it's true. It's exactly what these every entrepreneur says, which is kind of, you know, build it and they'll come. And I like how you prompted it by asking questions from your current audience at the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. That really helped a lot. And that's yeah, no, a I'm a, I want to know what my customer wants. Yeah. Right, what do they want? Not what you want to give them, right? No, no, but that is a good editor. That's what you had to do, too, when you were editing magazines. I mean, you had to know what your customer wanted because. Otherwise, you weren't going to sell any magazines. No, it's uh, what you said. I like the idea of putting together these little groups. And we are all don't want to acknowledge our, our knowledge. Is that the right word? We take it for granted. And I think when you're in a group like that, you learn more about yourself, too. <laughs> I think. Oh, totally. What I'm hearing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. You learn so much and you learn by sharing and you um, you know, that's the, I mean, that's the really wonderful stuff. And you also learn the stuff that you take for granted that you think, you know, like people tell me, like they, they bring me into groups for things and they're like, you know, they don't know how to tell their personal story. They don't know how to, you know, put themselves out there and explain who they are online or whatever. And for me, that's second nature. That's really easy. That's the easy part. I'm not a natural salesperson. Salespeople, you know, like, we are all different in what we do and and it's so easy and natural to us but it's hard for somebody else right and so right. that's that's the beauty of it it's just like i can do this i can do this in my sleep but i can't i i don't know how to sell something in my sleep and yet you may know you know i have friends who like that's what they love to do they wake up in the morning they'll, they'll sell you this hair tie you know, they're like, and it's fun. They think it's fun. Like, I can't think of right. anything more horrifying. <laughs> you know, that is so true. I didn't realize, you know, what I wanted to do growing, I should say growing up, but I was in the publishing world too, but on the oh. book, on the book side. Oh, okay. All right. Books did, but books fared better, I feel like. I feel like books. It's, um, it's that's kind of a mess right now too. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think I should say a mess, but everything. Industry is being affected by change all the time. And I think that technology is affecting everything. And I like the way you're taking the content from a magazine and creating other things. And that's probably why you podcast. That's kind of why I started. My podcast is based off my first book that I wrote. I was in the publishing business forever, but I didn't write my first book until I was, um, gosh, 51, you know, 50. <laughs> right. But it, it was just something. You have to have life happens and we put things aside and you have to focus. I always talk about focusing on, on what's important, right, to help you get there each day. And every woman has a different um, background and perspective. And I like how you're bringing them together. And I think I do better, actually, 
when I have been part of a group. I'm saying so yes. I, I do better. Yes. Um, you, you can't do it all by yourself. You, no, you, and I think I think that's the fallacy. I think women, uh, and this I've learned over time doing Covey, women have a hard time asking for help. I have a hard time asking for help. Yes. We're trained not to ask for help. We're trained to do it all ourselves. We're trained to stick it out. We're trained to figure it out. When you, and especially, you know, when you've gotten to be very accomplished in one area and now you're in an area where you don't know anything and it feels uncomfortable to ask for help. And one of the things we focus a lot on at Covey Club is the idea that you're going to have to reinvent yourself, restart, rethink, retool, re something with an RE in it is going to come into your life after age 40. And that's because you're going to have a health issue. You're going to get divorced. You're going to be widowed. You're going to have empty nest. You're going to have a uh, lose a job, get downsized. You know, like there's just a disruption, right? So there's going to be a moment where you're saying, wow, like, is this all there is? I need something else. I need to be excited again. How do I retool? How do I re reignite? How do I get going again? And um, that's one of the things that we kind of dove into is where we can work together and really create that energy. Right. And strangely, coming together with women you don't know uh, from around the world, Covey has women all around the world. It is very, very exciting. And it actually... You can bond better with people you don't know when you're in transition than with your friends who already know you the way you are, because yes. the, friend, the friends like you the way you are, because that's why you got to be friends, right? So they don't necessarily want you to, to change a lot. They're, they're, they doesn't mean they don't love you. It's just that they loved you the way they, you were. So why would, I don't need you to change. You're great, right? And, and especially if you've reached that point in your life where you're trapped a bit and you're, you know, sometimes we get these friends groups where we're like the, the uh, car wheel in the mud going, arr, arr, you know, and you can't get moving, but you're all complaining and all you're complaining. And suddenly the complaint thing becomes the reason why you're together. And um, then they really don't want you to change because if you actually move out of the mud, what does it say about them? Then it's like, whoa, like Anne's, Anne's left the group. She's happy. Yeah. Now it's the four of us and we're the old complainers. Now she, it, we have to do something. <laughs> People get stuck because they don't want to change or they're afraid to change. I'm guilty of that changing in certain aspects of my life. But it is part of life is change. And I think what you've created, this it helps you get through it. You're, you're pulling yes. each other up. Right. That's how I always see it. Help you get through change. Yes. And change will come to you. Um, it just will. And the question is, it's very hard to do it by yourself. I can tell you when I left the magazine and I was still finishing my master's and, you know, I was sitting at the dining room table doing, you know, I had to do a uh, start researching energy issues in Cambodia or MailChimp. And it was like, Okay, like, but I had no one to ask about MailChimp. I didn't know anybody who was an older entrepreneur, you know, and I didn't know any 20-year-olds who could tell me what was the best email service for my new business. I had to spend three weeks researching and, you know, finally came up with MailChimp. <laughs> but, you know, like, and so what's great about Covey is you come in and you you get into the, you know, to the chat in Covey Connect, it's called, it's our Facebook group, which is private. And you say, I'm starting my new business. What's the best mail server? And in five minutes, you're going to get all opinions. You're going to get the answer. I just spent three weeks. So that was the whole point. I don't want anybody else to have to go through that. All that stuff can be done much faster in a group with friends. And these women really have your back. That's what's great. I, I attract women who um, like to help each other. There are women out there who don't, and that's fine but they're not in the club. That, that's a good point. I like how you're talking about the, the information is there much. You get it response faster. And uh -huh. there's so much, that's what gets confusing and overwhelming to people, especially yeah. as we get a little, you know, because they're older, but it's the technology is affecting. I, I understand it right now. I do. Um, on some topics, I'm, I, I joke that I'm 
I know enough to be dangerous, but that, yeah, but, yeah. It's a, but it's something that you just got it. To me, I think it helps too, to keep learning, continuing learning. And that's part of dealing with the change and reinventing. You got to learn and what resonates with you. And I joke sometimes with people that my, if I had an avatar as a dog, that's, I get, you know, oh, I'll get a little, dis- I get distracted easy. Distracted. Uh, learning is a great way to approach this time of life. I, I think learning is a form of, I call it a tool. It's a tool that a certain group of us use to crack open the world, right? And if you are inclined that way, Covey Club is for you. We call us lifelong learners. And whenever, it just depends on your personality. If you have an issue or you see something you don't understand and your first, my first thing is, oh, let me, let me learn about that. Like, I mean, I feel everything is solvable. Everything is understandable. Everything, if you learn about it, you almost everything, you know, look, and we're not going to, you know, cure cancer just by learning about it, but we can do a lot towards taking care of ourselves. And if you are inclined like that, it is a certain way of approaching the world. Um, and we can feed that, all of that. That's kind of Covey's like base, you know, and you put your hands around, get your hands around the things that you're unsure of or uncertain of, you know, makes you feel competent and good and secure, right? Maybe it's an illusion, but, um, it definitely moves you. It can move you forward and out of that ditch. Right. Right. And I keep you stuck. Right. It's, it's a major way to get unstuck. Yeah, you don't want to be stuck all the time in the, in the same thing. And I'm one of those people. I do like ex, new experiences, not all the time, not yeah. fast. But I think it just ke- keeps my brain engaged. So yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> As, and one of the anti-aging things is to keep your brain engaged and to keep learning new stuff. That is that the science is out there about that, that if you if you make that effort at that, that's really a big deal. It is. And I've, I've had some weird things happen in my life, too. And that's kind of why I think also, which is helpful for people and has been for me, is being curious. And uh, is that the right word? Curiosity is so... Talking like a total Covey girl. <laughs> yes, I am. So like I am. But it's curious. I just like that helps you figure stuff out. Being curious. You look at things from a different angle. And and to not um, berate yourself if you don't have the answer. That's when, like you said, you got to get uh, help. You got to ask for help. And I'm very guilty of not doing that in the past. But I was involved in a group. Um, ever heard of Alt MBA? Which mm-hmm. is it's no longer. It was Seth Godin. Um, I right that is. And that was the first uh, like group I was part of. Cohort is what he called it. Right. And. I was like a part of the beta group and I'm like, oh, heck yeah, whatever. I'll do it because I had just, I had mentioned, I had just gotten um, laid off from a corporate job oh, and, yeah. and then I had cancer come back like oh. two, three months later. And so oh. I'm like, so I had to pause, like, what do I have to do with my life? That kind of thing. And just being involved with that group, we're all from different um, environments. It was just like, wow, I know more than I realized. And they, you know, and I learned. And that's why I love what you're doing, creating these, uh, you call it a, a covey. And, yeah. and Seth called it a cohort. But Yeah, cohort is the, you know, is the sociological technical term. Yes. But covey is, you know, it is literally a, a group of quail. That's what it that's means. That's so cool. I, I like, I like, it. birds are so intelligent too, Leslie. Yeah. They don't think how, or realize how smart they are. Oh, yeah. I had birds as a pet, and I'm a big bird fan anyway. So right. I wanted to call it um, my first one because I was looking for bird names. I wanted to call it, do you, know, do you know what a group of crows is called? Raven? Or no? Crows. A group of crows. Crows. Okay. For that. No, it's, a, it's a murder of crows. So I wanted to call it the murder. Oh, but my friends. My friends who were in publishing on the other side, the business side, they were like, don't do that. You can't yeah, let do that. Too scary. Gonna... Yeah, it's too scary. No, and I thought it was hilarious. And they were like, no one's going to think it's funny. They're, you know, so anyway, I didn't know. Right. People don't get the context if they're not right. involved. Right. That's why another thing I'm learning, you definitely uh, 
being in the publishing business, you've got to be so careful with your words sometimes yes. and how you're uh, connecting with other people. And I just think being, I learned being myself authentic has helped. I think that I has always that way. helped. Yes, like, yes. Before we got on this call, guys, I we were talking, I was from a male, do- not was, in a male, very male dominated industry. And so I had to be, uh, I just had to be more careful how I responded to them. And, but I was very lucky. I did have some supportive, you know, management and things like that. Cause they saw that thankfully I was got into this role in the early nineties. Right. Oh, wow. And, That's really, wow. Y- y- correct. And, but I did have one of the, um, just getting good feedback and that's why being yourself and being authentic and I don't like following a script sometimes though but you have to have the idea because I think that makes me question somebody that's just me if they're following a script too much Mm -hmm. hopefully that makes sense yeah but I've, I've learned to just embrace every situation and we know we have to pivot and we and and what you're doing is you're helping women pivot especially if they're mothers that's i'm just thinking all these different women that i know that we're all dealing because my sons are men now (laughs) yeah i know it right it's just like whoa that but at the same time i that's they're very appreciative of the upbringing that everyone has given them usually i'm not saying i was a perfect mother hey nobody's perfect you try to be, nobody's going to be perfect. You know, it's like, I always, I always, you know, that was my downfall was trying to be the perfect mother. And then I realized, you know, when you talk to your kids today, I have a 33 and a 28 and I'm like, um, they remember, they don't remember the day you took off from work and you were the only parent who showed up in the classroom right. for the X thing. They remember the time that you didn't show up for you know something whatever that might have been they were like yeah but you missed them. i was like no no i took the whole day off and there was no other parent there i don't remember that it's, uh, fine. Uh, it's like fine. no whatever it's really hilarious you're never gonna win the whole thing it's just um, what it's what's in your heart as you know it's if you love them and what's in your heart and you talk to them like adults and treat them like real human beings yes that's and people. get their, their feedback and my son's I something I ingrained in them was I thought reading was important. Yes. So I always had books around them. I always, my husband, he was reading them, you know, at, at bedtime as well. That's just something that ingrained in them. And my kids um, remember me. They called me the grammar Nazi. <laughs> I, helping them with their writing assignments. And I, I, that's one thing I was, probably I was a little too critical. I didn't yeah, to be that way. Okay. But I wanted them to their papers to have right. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's but then another aspect, you know, they they're really appreciative of that. I think it's funny now. Mm-hmm. And, but that's you but to, to put humor into your life too. And that's kind of why I've learned to just not take things too serious. I mean, there's you know what I'm saying. Everything oh, right. Yeah, no, I have to end my day laughing. Which <laughs> yeah. I end up scrolling into reels on facebook and laughing in bed and my husband's like what are you doing yeah. <laughs> I'm right it's laugh. I'm looking at those little clips i'm not on tiktok or anything but i do look at um i've got my sons are the ones that got me to start blogging it was my sons isn't that funny because i'm from the gender i didn't like share information you know they're the ones that convinced me to do it and then then i started looking at i can go down the youtube rabbit hole sometimes so i but I like looking at, um, but it's one way to learn as well, yeah. but you have to make yeah. sure, you know, it, it's okay to look at um, everything, but I always, my baseline is always having ink on paper, sorry, or a reading that's yes. just because of my, my upbringing and, and the business that I was in, I, it's ingrained. And then the podcasting is, as you know, Leslie, is really a great way to connect Oh, I love it. I love, I've met so many fabulous women on my podcast. I've met, you know, and it's, and it's interesting because I talk to real women. I do a few famous people, but I really try to focus more on real people. Mm-hmm. Because 
it's about reinvention. It's called reinvent yourself. And um, there are times when I'm like, oh my goodness, like, is she going to have anything to say? Or is he going to have anything to say? And those are the ones that you're like, holy moly, you get off the, you know, the call and you're like, who knew? Like, I mean, these people who've gone through like, you know, horror, just horrible right. life challenges, physical challenges, health challenges. And when they tell you their stories and they're average people, these are not movie stars. And, um, and when they tell you how they resolved it and we get down to the how to's at the end, it's only half an hour like yours. It is sometimes mind blowing because you're like, that is, that is truly absolutely amazing. And you think, okay, and I'm worried about which mail server, I use. <laughs> like, you know, like, um, put it in perspective, you'll figure it out. And, you know, if this person can do it, you can do it. So it's a lot of help, um, understanding. And also I try to get them to be really honest about what kind of investments they make, what kind of sacrifices they make. You know, one woman, she sold her house in order to fund her reinvention. You know, it's like, it's not, it's not, not helpful to say, oh, I went from being a TV producer to running this camp and it was so easy. And it's like, yeah, but what, what sacrifice? What are the steps in between? <laughs> right. right. What are the steps in between? Because, you know, we want to be honest about it doesn't happen overnight and it's hard, you, you know, and you may have to make sacrifices. So, um, and they, and they're not sacrifices to you if that's what you want to do. That's okay. So, um, it's just, you know, I find, I find real people extraordinary, you know, I really do. I always have, I guess, being a magazine editor, that was always the thing that was so surprising is what one woman can do. And the kind of, you know, the strength we have inside of ourselves today. And write those stories out there to help. It's a good uh, example for that. Like, you can't get through anything. But yes. I think stories are the baseline yeah. of maybe of our civilization. I mean, that's kind of how we are. And we always have shared yeah. stories. But I like that you're focusing specifically on helping women because you yeah, mentioned my whole life. Yeah, my whole life. Ask for yeah. help. They don't. Um, I'm very guilty of that. And We're all guilty of that. Yes. And I have the problem and I have the problem. <laughs> they are trained, you know, and, and I realized that um, you know, I was a, a very good girl. I'm a good girl. I'm an upholder. I follow rules. And I remember the turning point in my career was, you know, I was working really hard. I was a copy editor at Vogue and I'd been there for a couple of years. And I thought if I just, you know, had my head down, did the work, did great work, um, some fairy godmother was going to come tap me on the shoulder and say, You've been such a good girl. We are going to get a promotion. Right, it right. Don't look like that. I didn't know that, but that's what that's what I was brought up to believe in. It right. took me so long to understand. I watched all these other people who worked there who were very flamboyant. A lot of them made stuff up. They weren't honest. They didn't tell the truth. They were story makers. They didn't <laughs> made up stories about themselves. And those were the people that were getting ahead. And I remember saying to myself, like, oh, maybe there's a difference between doing a good job and getting ahead. Like, what am I not getting here? Like, this person, I'm doing his work, making him look good. And nobody's tapping me on the shoulder and moving me up. So there's a disconnect. And, you know, that's, that's how we learn. We learn by watching others. We learn by seeing others. And then hopefully... Back in that day, there really was nobody that I could go to to talk right. to about. There really, there was no camaraderie. There was no, it was kind of the mean girls club, at least where I was living. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned anything to anybody and they'd rip you apart. And um, so I had to kind of figure it out myself. And I feel like things have changed and I feel like women want to be there for each other and we do want to help each other and we want to help this next generation right. come up. Um and we want to, you know, give them an extra boost um, because it's hard. And look, the, you know, the truth is there are forces out there trying to push us backwards right now. So, oh, yeah, I have to we really have to band together 
And um, this is the moment to really, really look for girl power and help each other and you know, put put your fingers out there and let somebody else step in them and give them a boost over that fence. I mean, I don't care what the thing is. It's now or never, or we're going back to like some weird time in the past. Oh, I I can just, yeah, the stuff that's going on. And I just, we I want to help the younger generation too. To, to, because of what we have gone through, not we, but I, all women, all women. And it's, just show how you can be resilient and and stand up for yourself. That's kind of something I've always done. That's yes. just my I'm ingrained that way. I've always stood up for myself, but in a nice way. It's <laughs> that's kind of the best way to do it, right? So we've definitely this is like awesome. We have so much in common, and I love what you're saying and what you're doing. We do need to help. And applaud other women not applaud that's the wrong word but we need to you're giving them a platform yes and it's a a healthy platform right, right. to the right word yes, yes. It, and we, we need about, to support each other we need to support yes. each other. Not about competition it's about no. supporting each other and that what you have to remember about the competition thing the competition thing is a great way for a patriarchy to keep you focused on a different game than yes. getting, think about it. Yes. While you, if you say to somebody, there's only one seat at the table, now fight among yourselves to figure out who's going to get that one seat. You're squabbling over that. Meanwhile, they're just doing what the heck they want with the other seats, right? You're not even in the game because you're out fighting with each other. The whole point is stop fighting with each other and fight the guys at the top. Mm-hmm. The fact that there's only one seat at the table, that's what's wrong. Right. And that should not be the distraction. We cannot right. be distracted anymore. We need to have half of the seats and um, we need to fight for them and make it happen. And this is it. We're kind of we're kind of at the this is this is a great thing. important conversation. Very go game right now. You yeah. know, there's a lot that my generation and probably you thought the work was done. Now I have a 28 year old daughter. I thought, I thought I was handing her a world that was much better for her and easier for her than for me. Lo and behold, who knew we're going back. People are trying to push us way back to before, before I was born. Right. You know? And so we have to, we have to really, we have to really come out in force. And I will tell you, women are awake. And they're ready to do it. And I hope that everybody listening does it because now's the time. Find your sister. And if you're a guy as well, I mean, the men can help as well. I mean, they know they know this world needs to have women in it. They know that women have to be equal. They know they don't want a lot of men don't want to have to do everything. I mean, yes, it's probably great to be dominant and not ever have to think about treating other people poorly. But I think that's an older generation that's moving along and fading. And I think this younger generation of men, they do want to treat women well. They want partners. They, you know, and I, I think what's wrong with treating everybody equally? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. It's, it's a good point that you're making. And we do need to support each other. And especially the generation, the next generation, we need to support them. So, Leslie, where can people um, learn more about you? Yeah. So, come to CoveyClub.com. You can also find um, the podcast uh, on Apple Podcasts or any anywhere you're looking for. It's called Reinvent Yourself with Leslie Jane Seymour. And we're on social media. I'm on social media. I'm on LinkedIn. I have a big group on LinkedIn. Find me there. It's Leslie Jane Seymour, or it might be Leslie J. Seymour. And then also look for Covey Club everywhere. And I hope you'll come get on our newsletter. It's all free. You'll get all kinds of material, great writing. Um, you'll see all the great stuff we're doing, the challenges, the meetups. the. And if you really want to connect with great women like you and me, um, you can actually come join the club and see what it's really like to be um, supported by other women. I did a event in New York and, you know, I always ask at the end for, uh, you know, comments about it. And one woman wrote me this really amazing thing where she said, I've never been in a room with so many women who actually support each other. 
I had kind of written off the women in my life before that. And I've changed my mind. And I was devastated. I was just, I thought, wow, like, first of all, I'm so sorry for you. I mean, I've been with the mean girls, so I know what that's like, but I didn't, but I got out of there. You know, I didn't know that somebody would write off all women. And, um, and she felt in the room was a whole different feeling. Mm-hmm. And I was really proud of that. And it made me really happy. That's, it's so important what you're doing. And for those that are listening, I'll include the links in the description. And Leslie is a innovator and making a big change for our world, for the future, right? That's what we need. We need to. That's what we're doing. It's all about future kids. Yes. Thank you so much, Leslie. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your information and your story. Great. Thank you. Thanks so much.